G L A M O R O U S. Yeah. Hello, loves. I am feeling myself. I did not think this look was going to turn out okay, right? But she did. Um, I wanted to pop on real quick and say hey. I hope that you're having a great day. This video is a little bit more rambly than what I usually do, but I had some thoughts in my brain and I have some hair in my eyeballs and I need to get them both out, right? So I hope that you enjoy this video. Please leave a comment down below telling me, seriously tell me, who are you watching on YouTube today? Because I'm just curious where we're at, what the climate of YouTube is, what kind of content are we enjoying? Because I know that short form content is like really everybody's bag, but I just, I just don't really like it. <laughs> if I'm being honest, it's just not for me. I hope that you enjoy this video though and talk soon. <laughs> and stay hydrated, drink some water if you haven't yet. All right, so I had started to film this video and then I realized I was getting quite rambly. So we are doing a take two, <laughs> okay? And I'm going to try and get to my point a little bit more concisely. So the future of my content, right? I have been online for over a decade at this point and I have learned a lot of things. I've realized a lot of things. And one of the biggest things I have learned and realized is I hate being an influencer. <laughs> I, I hate being, um, I hate influencer. Is it expectation? The expectations that like influencers kind of all look a particular way. Our content is all a particular way. We all have this like one common goal. I just don't really vibe with influencer culture. And this is really like kind of rocking my boots because for so long I used to just say I'm an influencer, right? And so I'm like thinking about what do I want to create this fall? What, what What's the vibe? What are the vibes feeling like? And I realized, I feel like I got trapped in this cycle that a lot of influencers do where they're in the business of just making content and not so much in the business of just like actually creating things they really love or talking about things they really love. I mean, they might love the product, but like they're not really, you might like a product, but if somebody puts a price tag on it, then you might decide you really love it. And you might, it's not necessarily like you're persuading yourself to really love something, but I feel like we can all be influenced a little bit by a little bit of money, right? And I'm just like not vibing with that anymore. <laughs> like it's just not fun. And I realize I don't love creating content anymore because I have gotten so focused on just like being an influencer. And I was talking to my friend Mina, Miss Mina, <laughs> um, in Insta on Instagram. And we were talking about like, how much we miss when people would just like talk about shit they loved, right? Like when there was that element of community, when there was that element of people just like getting online and just talking about things and just showing their lives and people making literal mini feature films, but it was like, it was humble, it was normal. It was like so grounded in reality. And I feel like a lot of social media is, is not very grounded in reality. And I know that we are moving in the age of auth authenticity, but okay. And this might just be like a personal thing for me, but like, does authenticity also have to kind of mean mediocrity? Because <laughs> I, oh, okay. This is, I'm pretty sure this is just a personal gripe, but I really, really don't like creating content on my phone, all right? And I feel like people equate my content being created on my camera as like me being like a try hard in like the worst way. And I, but I love being a try hard. <laughs> I love putting effort into the things I make because that's the thing that's fun to me. The process of creation is fun to me. It's not so much because I'm not a buyer. I don't buy things. So I don't really have much to talk about in the way of like, if you wanna hear about this new makeup product, like I'm trying to think right now, I think all of the makeup I'm using I've had, this is probably vile and I don't recommend this, but like a lot of this makeup I've had, I've had for like over two, three, four, five years. So like I really am somebody who just buys a product and then I use it until the better end. I don't really, 
I'm, I'm just not somebody that buys, right? And so as an influencer, that's not a good, that's not a good place to be. You know, I feel like influencing is about buying. It's about keeping you up to date on this eye look is not going anywhere where I thought it would go. But yeah, I just don't really buy things. And so the fun for me and content creation, one of the fun things for me that was when I was, you know, a sex worker was, creating, the actual process of creating content and getting different angles and telling a story. And I feel like that's such a almost old school way because I feel like you're either in one or two categories. You're either, nowadays, you're either an influencer that talks about things, so you just sit in front of your phone and you talk about things you love, right? Or you are an influencer who somehow is able to afford these like freaking gimbals and put on these like mini feature films that just how on earth are you able to do that? And you're all also under 25. <laughs> like, I feel like that is where it's at, which none of that is wrong. I'm not saying anything about that. It's just, I am not in that category. I'm over 25. I'm also a person, just a humble being who has access to what she has access to, which is still better than other people. But you know, it's not, I don't have feature film equipment and I don't want to sit in front of my phone and just talk about products for the sake of just talking about products. Like that's just not fun for me. And so I feel like I spent probably the last half of my twenties really in my influencer era and trying to really just suck my way, I was really trying to fit my way into the influencer mold as hard as I freaking could so that I could decide, is this something I'm going to keep doing? And honestly, it sucked a lot of fun out of creating for me. It made, it made creation not fun for me anymore. And so as I think about my fall content and I also ponder my very existence on the internet anyway, I'm kind of like, what do I want to do? Do I even want to do this? Because the other thing that sounds very enticing to me is everybody knows I love dogs. And part of me is like, should I just go work part time with some dogs somewhere? Like, should I just, <laughs> should I throw in the towel? But then it makes me sad because number one, existentially, I don't remember the last time I've actually worked a regular nine to five job because I have been stripping or doing sex work in some sort of capacity for once again, majority of my 20s. So I, I don't even remember. I think my last job might have been at Macy's um, way back when I was in college. I don't even remember the last time I've held a regular job. Um, so that gives me many, um, a mini kind of anxiety attack to think about having like a manager and a boss. And I know that's not exactly something that everybody's gonna be able to relate to, but I think if you know, you know. But also it makes me sad because at one point this was something I really, really loved. And it's not to say that your interests don't change as you get older, but there is a part of me that does still really, really love creating and doesn't want to give it up and still really, really want to try and make this freaking thing work. Because when my lovely, lovely Instagram and Twitter and maybe even you here followers all got together and got me my birthday gift, my camera that I have literally been playing with so much, I have been running around my house. I've been running around in the backyard with my headphones on like a little kid and just taking pictures of the boys and like taking pictures of everything. And, and it reminded me just actually how much fun I really do have with the process of creation and why don't I play more? Like why, why am I not allowing myself to play more? I, there's this thing that I love doing so much, but I don't allow myself the opportunity to play with it anymore. I've, I've almost gotten too serious and sucked myself out of it. Being an influencer really truly just like robbed me. It robbed me of every ounce of just like joy. <laughs> Um, every ounce of individuality that I had, it made me feel like there was something wrong with me because I, I don't necessarily fit in a lot of boxes. I just don't. And I don't mean to say that in like a I'm special kind of way, but we all know social media thrives on niches, right? And the truth is I just never really fit into a niche well enough because I kind of just refuse as a personality type. I just utterly refuse to be put in a box. I do not want to feel like I ever have to compromise aspects of myself or my being for the sake of just like fitting into a, an idea. Um, I think Ash Levi on here has talked about that before where she has gotten management and they tried to get her, change her entire branding into like this clean California, 
um, aesthetic when she's a little bit grungier than that. They wanted her to like no longer have colored hair and stuff like that. And I feel like the same thing was kind of happening to me. A lot of the advice I was getting from, you know, people that would potentially want to work with me, they wanted me to like clean up my aesthetic and, and wear more colors and be somebody that Honestly, I'm just not. And I understand that this is a job and to a degree there is always going to be an, um, an amount of compromise, but part of me is like, I'm honestly, quite frankly, not getting paid enough. I'm not getting, if I'm even getting paid at all to compromise myself like that. I just don't want to. And also I do all of this so that people like me can find each other. And if people like me are all changing ourselves to be like someone like them, then we're never gonna be able to find ourselves and we're always gonna feel lonely. So like. What is the point? You know, it all comes back to community. It all comes back to the fact that like, without community, none of this matters to me. It just doesn't matter to me because I am not getting paid enough to be somebody else and cater to some other community I have no connection with, right? So I recently took a couple of hair jobs and a couple, two, a couple, a literal couple of hair jobs. And they were, my eye-opening experience. I have had bad experiences with influencing, but I think the combination of just how bad these were and then me turning 30, really just things in perspective for me, I'm just like, all right, we're done here. This this chapter of my life is over. It's, it's a wrap, right? They had wanted me to get content for them, and which I did. They had found me, I didn't reach out to them, so they knew, knew who I was and asked me to create some wig content for them, right? I created that content, sent it over to them to get approved, and they were basically like, content's really, really great, but you take off the filters and also shoot it like this. So essentially what they wanted me to do was reshoot all of my content that I'd shot for them. And in total from these two jobs, I was making $100, which is way, way, way below my going rate. And I'm only stating that because I want you to know if you are a black influencer, if you are an influencer, period, but especially if you're a black influencer, do not work for $100. Do not do that. That is way too low. That is inappropriate. Unless this is a brand that you really, really actually just really wanted to work with and you would have worked with them regardless, like you would have bought their product regardless, do not be working for $100. That is absolutely criminal for the amount of work that they want you to do. They essentially wanted me to reshoot all my content for them, which I did because at that point I was pissed, honestly. And I was like, let me just give them what they want. And then I'm going to move on with my life, right? <laughs> We're gonna be done here. So I shot my content for them and it was the most soul sucking thing I'd ever done because they wanted me, they really just wanted a mannequin to wear their product. That's all they wanted. Um, if you go to my Instagram feed, you can see that I put a lot of effort into my content. I put a lot of, you know, I shoot most of my content with my Canon camera. I color grade. I'm not so much of a filter user unless I'm shooting an app, but I color grade a lot of my stuff. And my, my thing is, like I said, I like putting effort into my content. So like, that is my whole thing. It's not just to show off product, it's to put effort into creating and telling a story. And they just wanted me to create regular, regular wig content, which not wrong or right, just not what I do. So I really didn't need to be hired for that job, but they saw a black person who wears wigs and gave me the job anyway, offered me the job anyway. And I took it because I was just, I was being dumb. I don't know, I, I, I just took it because it's a check and I was being dumb. And through all my frustration with all of that, they were so freaking needy and so freaking naggy about making sure that I was getting their stuff done within their timeline. And I just could not take it anymore. And I, I snapped. I snapped. I was like, after I post this stuff, I'm gonna leave it up for the time that I need to leave it up, but then I am taking it down and I'm never talking to these people again, and I am done. It is over. Because it truly made me realize I don't ever want to actually be an influencer, ever. I don't want to make content where I feel like I have to be somebody or turn into something that I am not. I don't wanna feel like I have to sacrifice my own personal artistic I, my own voice for the sake of other brands. And I know it doesn't, it, it's not that deep, but like 
for me, this is my art. It's not me just talking about things I love. This is my art. So yes, it is that deep because I am an artist and I feel like I'm being robbed of my art. I feel like I'm being told not to make my art for the sake of literal pennies. And then I get the job that I'm actually shooting for today and they are shooting me my, I mean, they're paying me my rate and the, the brand owner is essentially like, listen, I actually follow your content. I really love what you do. Can you do what you do, but do it for me? <laughs> and that's essentially how that job is going. And that makes me excited. I feel, you know, especially now that I have the products in hand, I feel inspired. I feel like I am trusted. I feel like the right person for the job. I feel, I just feel good about it. And I'm like, I know that these jobs, I don't wanna say are fewer and far between, but I know that these jobs are something special and I don't want to have to compromise myself with other jobs while I sit and wait for these special jobs, right? Which means I don't actually want to be an influencer. I just want to be an artist. And so relating this back to old school YouTube, old school content, I just miss back when people were just creating things because that's genuinely what they loved. And I'm so happy that people are getting paid. None of this is about making sure that people are getting paid because we all should be getting paid for the amount of effort that we're putting into the art that we're creating. But I don't love that TikTok is a shop now. <laughs> I don't love that everywhere we go, we are being sold products and it feels like we're just, it feels like we're on QVC on an endless loop. Like it just feels like it's just QVC all the freaking time instead of just like a channel and instead of just like a place you can tune into. And I just don't love that. And I don't want to be a part in contributing to that. Really, all I wanna do at this point is just take my time to create intentionally, you know, create with purpose to create, to actually get my messages that I've always wanted out, out there. I want to make sure once again that there is a space for people like me to find each other and people that have, it's so funny because I was trying to, um, it goes back to niching again. I was trying to find, I was trying to figure out what to, what, what to call myself as far as style is concerned so that when I use hashtags and whatever, then I can use the relevant words, right? And for so long, I had struggled but attempted to try and fit myself into words like, or niches like pinup and goth and gothabilly. But I'm just now realizing um, in my extensive hunt that maybe I'm a little bit more of the vintage side of things. And once again, this all relates. So even if you're not really understanding what I'm saying right now, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get back on board in a second. But I realized that maybe I'm a little bit more on the vintage side of things. And, but then there's still that element missing, right? So like, I'm a little bit more on the vintage side of things, but if you look at the vintage side of things, it's gonna be like browns and beiges and olive tones, a little bit more earth tones because a lot of clothes that are vintage and thrifted, they can and not always, but tend to fade and in color so they're not as vivid anymore. And I'm still wearing the darks. I'm wearing the reds, the blacks, the, the pinks, you know? I'm very romantic in my color palette. And so then I thought, why don't I think romantic and dark? And so I'm trying to create almost this like subgenre for myself essentially, right? But then I'm like, you know, cause I truly believe this and I don't mean it in a bad way. Some people think it's a bad thing to say, but I, I actually find comfort in it. I'm not the only one of me that exists. And so knowing that I'm having a hard time finding people that fit my same kind of genre, there has to be other people out there. And then if we narrow down even more, there has to be black people that are having a hard time finding, you know, the alternative side of them that's not all, you know, inverted crosses and skulls and blood. And, and once again, none of this is right or wrong or bad or good. It's just, it's not what I'm into, which makes me go, it is important that I am still putting myself out there if I so choose to, because People like me can still find people like me. I know that there has to be people out there 
that are still into the try hard content, okay? <laughs> and not the try hard content because I'm also too old to be doing those videos that are like, I traveled to five different countries in three days. Like I, in a, it, I, like I don't have it like that money wise, but also I just don't have the energy for that. And where's the fun in going to five places in three days, all right? Where's the fun? You know what I don't love? And some of my, old school favorite YouTubers do this kind of content now is I don't love like I bought all these items on Wish and let's try them out or oh my god is this product for real like I understand clickbait I understand why it exists and if I'm smart I will make this video a clickbait title but I just don't resonate with um excessive buying even if it's cheap I don't resonate with shock value that's not really that's just not my vibe I look at it and it's it's all corny to me personal to me it's it's just a personal opinion but it, it it is it's just all corny to me and i'm just i'm not at that point in my life anymore you know i am a normal girl who happens to love fashion and happens to love makeup and photography who just learned how to love herself <laughs> and that's it and i kind of just miss the age of normal people appearing online and doing their their best they're doing their best and they love what they do you know they love the content that they create and so at this point in time i don't really know how much longer i'm going to be parading myself online um i have really decided that you know my 20s i really was about not giving up and my I have a different kind of mindset on not giving up <laughs> right now. And I, and I think it's important to clarify that I don't really think giving up is necessarily a bad thing. I think sometimes you just don't want the same things that you had wanted or you thought you had wanted and it's okay to change your mind. And I just don't want the same thing I had thought I wanted um, when all of this stuff had started, you know? For me, all of this stuff when it started was supposed to just be my gateway into a life of mainstream media. Over time, that just kind of didn't happen. And I'm okay with that. Like I'm, at this point I'm fine with that because I'd much rather honestly be at home with my dogs. Like I just, if somebody had offered me the opportunity to tour music, I, I would probably take it, but I would fight tooth and nail to make sure that there is a way for my dogs to come with me because I just, could not imagine being uprooted away from them for any amount of time. <laughs> like I just couldn't do it, but also just, it's my priorities have changed. What's important to me now is really just like a sense of stability and then not having a freaking miserable ass time doing something that I'm doing for free because majority of the time I'm doing this shit for free. And I have been stressing myself out to the point of sucking the fun out of it. And I just, want more fun out of this now. So I'll definitely be utilizing my sex work skills, which is so funny to think about, but I'll be util utilizing those skills in my content and going back to just creation and focusing on just actually creating and having fun creating. I have actually, and I haven't officially closed it down yet, but I've stopped posting on my OnlyFans because I am no longer going to be doing OnlyFans and I actually am switching over to Patreon because Patreon will allow me to make my content less expensive, but also I can just go back to making the stuff that makes me happy, which is a lot less crude. <laughs> um, if we're being honest, it's basically if I could post it on it, if, White, white skinny girls can post my content on their Instagrams, but I couldn't do it because I'm a little bit curvier and because I'm black. It's seriously like the most tame, it's photography. And that is what my Patreon is gonna be. I also will be offering um, signed letters with polar, Polaroid pictures in them. So then if people just wanna take a little something of me to have in their wallet or whatever, then they can do that. And that is how I'm going to be kind of supplementing my OnlyFans income. And I'm just going to start taking the jobs that actually speak to me and I'm not taking anything else anymore because I'm just done. I'm exhausted, I'm tired, and this is the only way that I can keep doing this without having a mental breakdown every single freaking day over what the hell I'm creating. <laughs>
<laughs> like I said, we are just trying to return back to the days of having fun online and being ourselves and not having to feel like we have to fit a particular mold, which means I have to just make some changes. We we have to make some changes here, bestie. Like it's, it's time, you know, and it's okay. It is okay to close chapters and be done with them. It is okay to move on. I am moving on. I'm getting older. <laughs> I cannot find the brush that I'm looking for. Here it is. But I do have some fun content that I'm excited to create for fall because I love fall and I love, you know, I just love not dying when I go outside. It's favorable. I'm pretty excited for that. I'm also just excited. I'm I'm truly honestly just excited to be flexing my muscles again, my, my production muscles again, because I feel like it has been so freaking long because even sex work honestly suck, sucked a lot of the fun out of creation for me because you just get stuck in the cycle y'all you get stuck in the you have to create 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 cycle and and it does it just it when you have to create like that there isn't time for having fun it's it's you're following a formula you're following a template and then you realize this is what works and this is the most efficient th way to do things so i can get things out on time so why mess with the formula and so it just it inevitably just sucks every ounce of artistry out of what you're doing it's not that my content in the past is bad it's just it wasn't my favorite to make because I just feel like I was just trying to, I was trying to appease an algorithm. I was trying to appease whatever daddy of an app I was using. And I, now I'm just like, I'm too old and too tired to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. So I'm not. <laughs> I think I'm going to real quick finish up my face and then I will be right back. Okay, so do you ever have a look? This is probably not a universal experience actually, but I really didn't think that this look was gonna turn out the way that I wanted it to, but now that I've seen it in the mirror, I feel good. It turned out really, really well. I think it's, I'm shooting in front of studio lighting and usually I just like do my makeup in the bathroom with this like very low lighting. And I think I'm so used to seeing myself in not good lighting that now that I see myself in good lighting, I'm like, oh no. So I feel like I'm like, I caked so much makeup on and I am wearing more than usual, but it, it turned out. I mean, what do you think? What do you think? I feel like it turned out okay. Bangs, they're great until you realize it means it's hair in your face, right? But I am about to go shoot some work. And so I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit more rambly than usual, but I just had to get these thoughts out and let you know exactly what is going on when you start to see my content look a little bit more different and maybe like there's more effort put into it, that is why, or maybe a different kind of effort. I still put a lot of effort into my videos, but maybe a different kind of effort, that is why it looks different. And I guess next week there won't be a video because I'll actually be on vacation. I'm going to a little festival, it'll be my first festival ever. So I'm going to be going to that. So next week there won't be a video, but until the next time, I hope that you are able to extend compassion, grace, and love for yourself. Bye. <laughs>